Today, through a method called plastination, it's possible to permanently display the inside of a body in a more fascinating and aesthetic way than ever before. Dry and odourless, these specimens are practically imperishable, allowing them to be handled and understood in a very real way. This makes plastinates invaluable, not only for the training of future doctors, but also for educating medically interested laymen. A Body Worlds exhibition in Germany. The pieces on display are not works of art in a conventional sense, rather they highlight the craftsmanship and complexity employed by nature to create the human body. The bodies are real. They come from people who left instructions while alive that their bodies should be donated for plastination after their deaths in order to help educate future generations. To prepare a body for plastination, it's first necessary to halt its decay. To do this, a solution of formaldehyde is introduced into the body's arterial system. After approximately three to four hours, the body's whole arterial system has been filled. This destroys all the bacteria. The body will no longer decay and the anatomical preparation, that is, the laying bare of its anatomical structures such as organs, muscles, sinews and nerves, can begin. First, the skin and subcutaneous fat are removed. The organs, muscles and sinews, as well as the nerves of the body, are all surrounded by a thin layer of fibrous connective tissue. This tissue is carefully removed with a scalpel and forceps, enabling the individual anatomical structures to appear. Alongside a good anatomical knowledge and manual skill, preparation requires much patience. Preparing a whole body can take anything up to 800 hours of work. After preparation, the actual process of plastination begins. In the first step, the water and soluble fat in the body are replaced by a solvent. For this, the prepared body is laid in a cold acetone bath at minus 25 degrees. The acetone, which is still liquid at this temperature, gradually becomes diluted with the body's own water. This dilution makes it necessary to replace the acetone bath several times. The water concentration in the acetone bath is continuously monitored in the laboratory. When no more water can be measured in the bath, the body is classed as water-free. The acetone is then warmed to room temperature to dissolve soluble body fat from the tissue. This process of dehydration and defatting takes approximately three to four months. The next step is the main process of plastination, forced vacuum impregnation. The acetone-soaked specimen is laid in a bath of liquid silicone and subjected to a vacuum. The vacuum sucks the acetone out of the specimen, creating a loss of pressure in the tissue that pulls the silicone into every last cell of the body. The escaping acetone collects in pearls on the surface of the silicone bath and is continuously sucked away. When no more acetone bubbles appear, the impregnation is complete. The process of impregnation takes about six to eight weeks. The specimen is removed from its silicone bath and allowed to drip dry. In this state, it's still flexible and adaptable. After impregnation comes the positioning. 
the body is now placed in the desired pose. Its anatomical structures are also positioned with the help of needles, wires, staples and other aids. Depending upon the specimen, the process of positioning can take anything from a few weeks to several months. In the final step, the specimen is hardened with a special gas. An airtight chamber is built around the plastinate, into which the gas is inserted. This hardening, or curing, completes the plastination process. The plastinate is now permanently protected from decay. One special use for plastination is sheet plastination. These thin, transparent slices, cut either through or along the body, are particularly suitable for displaying how the various positions of anatomical structures relate to each other. Slice by slice, their relative positions become visible down to the microscopic level, allowing individual deviations to be clearly viewed. For sheet plastinations, the dead body is first foamed with polyurethane and deep frozen at minus 70 degrees. In this way, the body is fixed in a block, allowing it to be sawed into millimetre thin slices with a high speed bandsaw. As in silicone plastination, these body sheets have their water and soluble fats removed with acetone before being vacuum impregnated with transparent epoxy resin. In order to provide a polished surface, the sheets are once again cast in epoxy resin following impregnation, this time with a flat glass container. Finally, they are hardened in a kiln. Plastination was invented in 1977 by the doctor and anatomist Gunther von Hagens. Since then, it's been continually developed and refined. Today, his workshop is located in Guben in Brandenburg, close to the German-Polish border. It's the largest and most modern plastination centre in the world. The facility includes a section for the general public, called the Plastinarium, where visitors can follow the individual stages of plastination close up. Spread across 3,000 square metres, it offers a fascinating glimpse into the anatomies of both humans and animals, as well as various plastination techniques. The Plastinarium is a public exhibition, a centre of anatomical excellence and a transparent factory in one.